My brain's splitting off in so many different directions. My brain's splitting off in so many different My brain's splitting off in so many different directions that no one has the answers to. <laughs> my dad was a shrink. Certain things upset me. And my dad was a shrink. Certain things upset me. And my dad was a shrink. things upset me. What's the furthest star? And then what's beyond the furthest star? What's the furthest star? And then what's beyond the furthest star? What's the furthest star? And then what's beyond the furthest star? Questions that no one has the answers to. I'm Jeremy McGrew. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast that is currently going through the ecstatics run of comic books released by Marvel. Mm-hmm. We're uh, in the middle of a two-issue run called The Cure. Do you want to catch us up with what's been going on? Yeah. Um, Robert Smith got his band together and recorded a demo okay. in the mall mm-hmm. kiosk. Uh, I, should, I don't know anything about versions. The Cure, so like, keep, keep going. I'm, I've been learning new facts right now. <laughs> um, he's also famously monogamous. Okay. And now that's all the things I know about the cure. Um, he sings about monogamy. How? how oh, okay. I was about to say, how can you be famously monogamous? Like, I don't, I don't really. <laughs> the, uh, he, he just brings up his wife a lot. He's kind of, he's kind of one of the original, he's a goth wife guy kind of, he's, he's, in a lot of ways. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of really thought about that, but it's like, he sings about it and talks about it in a pre-internet age. Interesting. Uh, quite a bit. And obviously not in like an um, obnoxious way, like Chance the Rapper did on that one album where he went complete wife guy and was like, oh, well, this album sucks. Like, I, I, I have not heard that uh, Chance the Rapper album. Oh, I mean, you, you, it's, it's, I mean, if you want to, if you want an album about Chance loving his wife a whole lot, <laughs> that's, that's the <laughs> well, I was wondering how much he loved her. I guess there's <laughs> one way to find out the answer to that. He's <laughs> waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, like, ah, Chance the Rapper. <laughs> How do you feel about his wife? How's his matrimony doing? Is, is it okay? Um, is everything good? <laughs> in uh, in real life, uh, we're dealing with uh, Vivisector, the least popular ecstatics mm-hmm. uh, admitted, um, has recently taken a what he thinks is a cure for his mutant powers, but it was actually a plot by Dr. Uh, Finley to uh, steal his powers. Yep. And he's consequently lost everything. He lost his boyfriend. He lost his ecstatics membership. This is all in a bid to impress his father. Because uh, he's got big time daddy issues, mm-hmm. and uh, this cover is a wolfed out uh, Finley who's looking a little bit more wolfed out than Miles usually does. Um, his claws are a lot bigger. Uh, he's got very detailed feet for some reason, with some real pointy toenails, which seems kind of gross. Well, I think this is Vivisector because Finley doesn't have the glasses. Oh, I think this is just okay. Vivisector versus human Vivisector. Oh, okay. Well, I. Um. Okay. It's, it's kind of hard to tell because the artist is not, uh, the, the cover artist is Mike Allred, but the interior artist is, uh, Dragoda. Yeah. His name is, uh, I think his name is also Mike, Mike Dragoda. Um, so the art does not look the same. Yeah. It's going to look a little bit different. Um, and we're going to start out with Dr. Finley, who is, um, now that he's administered himself, the mutant ability to turn into a wolf, like of all of the guys too, by the way, like mm-hmm. if you could steal any one, and this is very much like the, if what mutant power would you get? But like of all of the people in the universe, like you would like, I, I want to be wolf guy. Like it just seems so weird. I think it's just, he wants to be on ecstatics, mm-hmm. you know? So he's choosing the one member of ecstatics to like, you know, absorb his powers. But I would take, there's probably a lot of other people who don't want to be mutants. I would rather steal yeah. rather than turn to a werewolf. Never thought werewolves were cool. Yeah, for me um, the, uh, you know, so he's got the power in him now and he can't, uh, he's trying to get angry. His girlfriend's helping him. Um, here, you know, like, let's get you all hairy and angry. Uh, and they're basically just kind of like spitball on the problem. You know, she's trying to tease him. She's like, what if I poke you in the eye? What if I spit in your face? You know, uh, she's like pointing out his bald spot you know, and being uh, really, you know, really mean about it. And it got him angry, but it doesn't actually do it. It doesn't turn into a wolf man. Polly is like the secret MVP. Like the girlfriend Polly is the secret MVP of this issue to me. Like she's, yeah, she's, she's pretty great. She's so good. At, like she just, she's kind of like, she's just with him. I think on this journey, like it, th- she doesn't say like, why are you doing this or anything? She's just like, yeah, sure. Like what, what, what do you need? Let's honey? Do it. So <laughs> stand by your wolf man. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> wolf stand by your wolf man. There you go. Uh, you know, so, you know, he goes to the traffic to try to get angry. Uh, he lets her order expensive things from her restaurant. Um, none of it's working. And then he eventually says, or she admits that she had a thing with this guy named Marco, this photographer. Mm-hmm. 
Um, she had previously lied to him about it. Uh, and this makes him mad, but doesn't make him mad enough to turn to a werewolf. Um, and we, we cut over to, uh, miles, um, having, uh, being in a coffee shop, having a uh, coffee with, and just eating like six bagels. Yeah. You notice that? Mm-hmm. They just got a plate full of six bagels. They're eating no cream cheese, it's no how, nothing. It's just, how the, let's just eat six bagels. It's how the rich live, man. <laughs> yeah, you can have as many bagels as you want once you have money. It's. I look forward to it someday, just being able to have be bagel rich. Oh yeah, just have bagels around me at all times. Like this is I don't know, uh, like that Jerry Seinfeld show um, where he drives around in fancy cars with comedians. I don't remember the name of it, mm-hmm. um, but it, it like this is <laughs> this is what every episode was about. Like they would get a cup of coffee and they would just have like twelve bagels on the on the thing. I was like, who's paying for yeah. all these bagels? And it's the car actually had bagels for wheels. It was that fancy. <laughs> it was a super every uh. single car. <laughs> <laughs> um, the. Uh, He's talking to his mom uh, here and his mom says like, yeah, you know, your father's having his 60th birthday, 60th birthday party. He'd really like you to be there. Um, we're really happy that you took the cure. And then she lets on. She's like, I was wondering if it cured, got rid of that other thing. Um, thinking that him getting rid of his mutant power would also get rid of his homosexuality. Um, and he fires back. He's like, no, yes, yes, mother. It's gotten, she's sarcastic. I got rid of my gayness. Next time I'm having my skeleton removed. And his mom's just like, your skeleton? Like, she doesn't understand sarcasm. Yeah. I uh, hear. And he decides to go pick out um, a present for his dad. Um, and his dad is rich. Like, they, he comes for money, but he's not, like, ecstatics excuse me ecstatics famous rich um so uh, he's yeah. trying to f- picture out pictures trying to get something that is would be hugely impressive to him and he um and he picks this like super nice like fancy pin or whatever yeah um, gold pen yeah and then um after that after this like really weird bagel field <laughs> breakfast and shopping <laughs> experience then he has to go clean out his room at the ecstatics tower uh which is very funny yeah sad stuff mm-hmm um, we go to Finley and, uh, he's in his basement science lab being strapped down and he's saying like, listen, I, I can't just be made mad. I have to be made mad by the same things that made miles mad. Um, you know, in his psychology, you know, I had him say the reasons why he was so upset. I need to basically like clockwork orange myself mm-hmm. into this to, uh, to get all of the same things. She still thinks it's about Marco, uh, but he does not, does not care about that. Um, and she pulls the lever. Uh, and it's replaying all of his emotional energy about his dad and it turns him into a wolf man, but like a scarier, nastier wolf man mm-hmm. who kind of thinks that he's a uh, vivisector. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, a uh, it's, it's kind of weird. Like he's saying his son, I was, I was not worthy. I was subhuman. Like his identity is getting, you know, mixed up mm-hmm. with miles. And it's um I, I I like this a lot like the idea of mm-hmm. like trying to transpose a mutant power to someone, um and then like inheriting a bunch of bullshit with it is really interesting like yeah, I, yeah. I, imagine being like I just want to shoot I beams and then like waking up and going like ooh I have a lot of weird issues with with, with Jean Grey <laughs> <laughs> redheads redheads <laughs> um the uh yeah the, the, that's something that the Stacks keeps doing where like the mutant power is tied up to identity mm-hmm. you know. Like uh where you know Edie couldn't teleport until she figured out her stuff with her kid. Um fat couldn't fat up until he figured out his stuff with his homosexuality. And Vivisector, you know, is using this rage for his father, and he's now had that removed from him, not really his mutant power. Like it's a little bit of both, as we'll find out. Um so obviously this is uh he's you know super scary now. He's a scary wolf man, and he's gonna go fuck up some Marco. Yeah. Uh um, I love this kind of splash drawing of of him coming up the stairs, like as super wolfed yeah. out wolf man. Like this is really really good. Um, and then yeah, he goes uh, to grab Marco, um, and who is you know taking pictures of half naked women, and just cuts the dude's throat. <laughs> like no no mess yeah. no mess no fuss, just slash slash, and that, and that dude dead. I, I love uh, third person Marco. Who or what is disturbing Marco? <laughs> uh, and then Marco is dead. Um. Ecstatic is, is watching this and they're like, oh shit, it's Vivisector. Yeah. You know? Uh, and they're like, maybe, you know, maybe that's not him. I've never seen him look that nasty uh, before. And they're like, maybe the cure just made him worse. You know, maybe I could do that. And like, you know, Tyke says, I could do that and be sweatier. And Dead Girl says, I could be deader. Um, and uh, Venus says, and Guy would end up more sensitive. And Dupe does one of his jokes that I don't know the translation of. Uh, and everybody busts into laughter. 
uh, including a, a sincere, oh, no, you didn't, <laughs> uh, which I like a lot. Absolutely. Um, um, this is their problem, though. They can't just let a former member go on a rampage. Absolutely not. Um, meanwhile, Miles, he was not slashing fashion photographers' throats, is uh, has arrived at his childhood home for the birthday party. Um, and he makes a joke about Xanax, which his mom interprets as a character, <laughs> like another one of his teammates, yeah. <laughs> one of your mutant buddies, Xanax, yeah. which I think is very funny. Um, and he's trying to My like, buddy. and he's trying to like mingle and like kind of, you know, fit into this place. Like, right. Like this is going to be his life now. So he's trying to figure it out and it's just not working. Like he's, he, yeah. he kind of regresses to being the scared child that he was before he became a mutant. Uh, and he's kind of pulled, he's just despairing. Uh, this, the scene of him just sitting in a hallway while parties going on is very relatable, mm-hmm. uh, to me. Um, and he gets kind of called out by one of his father's students, um, who is, uh, you know, a big fan of his work, not for his work on ecstatics, but his intellectual work, you know, his, uh, his, his work on Emily Dickinson and on poetry and literature. Um, you know, so he meets this guy who kind of hits on him. Um, it's like this really nice little, like moment for him but at that exact moment his father's ready to see him yeah um we cut over to uh just a one page thing of finley kind of rampaging heading to new hampshire uh being called called home Mm -hmm. um you know he's kind of musing about uh this firestorm of hatred what he has to do with his anger towards his father so he's kind of being genetically called yeah back to the 60th birthday party and his um his internal monologue is all like what is a vivisector what does that mean it means to cut something open while still alive to tear out the pulse and the entrails like he is only focused on the monstrosity of of side of this whole thing of the rage and the pain um yeah. I, I, again just really love the art of him like clotheslining dudes through like the police barricade hulk. yeah yeah absolutely it's like jack kirby hulk stuff it's it's real good mm-hmm. like the uh i like the uh Dragato. yeah um we've seen him before he did the backup strip i think with corkscrew ah cool um yeah so yeah i'm a fan of this artist um we cut back to miles he's checking in with his father whether he likes his birthday present and his father is an absolute piece of shit uh you know just like oh you know, this is ostentatious and obscene like a cheap you know pen would write just as well but what should i expect from somebody who prostitutes themselves on television you know, just the absolute monster dad. I think all you need to know about this dad is that um, he's having, like, his wife threw a 60th 60, 60 birthday party for him. There's a whole crowd of people downstairs, and he's just chilling in his office alone, calling up people one by one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> to critique their gifts. <laughs> like, thank you. Like, are you the godfather right now? Like, what the fuck is wrong yeah, with Jesus you? Jesus Christ. It's yeah. so fucking weird. This is what happens when you have a famous professor. Yeah. You know, professors command so much respect. Um, teachers in this country, this God, like, such big heads. I'm telling you, um, you get one drop of tenure and you gotta let her go straight to the cranium. Yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah give him an inch, they think they're a ruler. Um, so he's he's doing this, and uh, Miles backs off from saying what he thinks. And that exact moment, uh, Finley comes in, busts in, and starts beating the crap out of his dad, telling him what Miles thinks. Yeah, you know, basically the external you know presentation of his rage mm-hmm. in a in a therapy kind of sense. And ecstatic shows up at roughly the same time um, because they just kind of they were following the just path of destruction, but also like pr- probably you know knew where they, this was all going to end up. Um, <clears throat> and meanwhile, Finley has like the dad by the throat, just slammed against the wall, and like going through this whole like you made me feel worthless, all the stuff that we've heard Vivisector say, but not out like to his father. Um, guy yeah. is is very hilarious right here because he's just like hold up. Let's just see where this goes. I want to see how this plays out. <laughs> I got it. I want to see how this plays out is such a funny motivation because it happens in fiction and in real life. I never want to see how something plays out. Like, I'm just like, I got to stop this thing before somebody gets hurt all the time. It's like a video game logic thing. Yeah. You know, like the guy has a save state that he can go back to if this gets <laughs> fucked up. Nobody you know? in the real world wants to see consequences. It's not, they don't exist. No. <laughs> I fucking hate a consequence, dude. Love to reap, hate to sow. Um, love to sow, hate to reap. Yeah. The uh, so basically, you know, I'm saying this like, you know, you made me feel unworthy. It's actually very similar to the uh, the Long Night Wolverine podcast we covered. Um, in terms of that kid who turned into a beast and yelled at his father, played by Bob Balaban, about all this shit. Uh, he's about to kill his dad, and uh, Miles stops him. Yeah. And he's like, you know, he may be all those things, but he's my father. He gets the pen. Uh, as a gift and stabs it into his eye with a splut uh, the, the noise eye. yep splut um 
And the dad is very shaken. You know, he's like, the things that Kree tried to say, what is it? And he's like, yeah, it was all true. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have the bravery to say that. Uh, he said, but I couldn't, you know, happy birthday, father. Here's your, your murder pen, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, he's about to leave. He just says, uh, you know, guy says like, Hey, it's, let's, let's go home Venus. And Miles like, see you later fellows about to just, you know, sink into misery. And they say like, what are you talking about? You're coming with us. Like you're a mutant. And he had furred up a little bit. Yeah. During that. Cause, it's, Cause you can't steal mutant powers apparently. Um, yep. You can borrow them. Back at HQ, they say, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta prove it. You gotta, you gotta go after it. You gotta fur up for us." And um, there's a great uh, a little joke before that where he's like, "I'm formally readmitted. Do you want me to put that in writing?" And Anarchus says, "God help us, no. Yeah, please don't." Uh, <laughs> I, I love that. Um, you know, and they just say, "Yeah, you have to fur up." And now he furs up, and he's like furrier and stronger mm-hmm. uh, than he was before. He's leveled up. Yep. Uh, he's the prestige class. And the idea here is instead of thinking about things that make him anger, angry, he thinks about good stuff. Um, you know, he thinks about poems he likes. He thinks about that guy who hit on him, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's just going to make him more powerful, not embracing this anger. Yeah. So he's letting go of all of this, of all of his daddy issues, essentially. Um, I wish that some of my personal struggles and problems could be, you know, personified by an evil scientist and then just work itself out for me. You could stab in the yeah. eye. Yeah. And then I could stab the yeah. dude in the eye and then, like, just go back to my team of millionaires. Like, I know this That'd is a awesome. real specific thing, but I think it would work for it me. All <laughs> yeah. The, uh, have you ever seen, you seen that gift that was going around Twitter of, uh, Force Field Wife and Problem Clown? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's it's like a little gif about like marriage and it, it's, it's a guy on a cliff. He's walking and there's a silhouette of a clown that's just throwing hatchets into his back. And they keep hitting him in the back. And then a wife comes out, labeled wife, and puts a force field around him and then zaps the problem clown. <laughs> and okay. the clown is just labeled problems. Uh and it's just like the, the tweet was just like, I love it when force field wife saves me from problem clown. <laughs> um, I can get down with problem I, I think clown. About, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense I, to me. I think a lot about force field wife and problem clown. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been somebody's force field wife before. Like when I just, when all of a sudden I realized sure, like I've certainly been somebody's problem clown. <laughs> yeah. I've been all of them, you know, I've been on both sides of this doctor. <laughs> yeah. I am problem clown. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, I am the great problem clown, Gary Butterfield. <laughs> um, they uh. go, we're, we're at the end of this they go back to um like a red carpet affair um where miles is like he's dressed up a little better um it's a, kind of a real small detail that i noticed like his tux before mm-hmm. was very um guy's first prom kind of tux with the yes. frilly little like inset and now he like actually looks like he had something tailored or made for him um it looks very sophisticated and as he's walking down the red carpet uh the his ex brandon comes out and is like tries to get back with him um and of course you know miles ditches him because he doesn't need that dude anymore um, um, and it ends with him saying, you know, hey, you should calm down. There's no reason you could, should get angry at me. Anger is such a negative emotion. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So the swerve being this isn't necessarily about him uh, dealing with his uh, mutant powers and stuff so much as dealing with his anger. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and, um, a nice, little, nice little swerve, nice little story lit for Viv. Yeah good story i like uh i like where this went uh i like the, the path that it took when i saw uh when i was opening the issues up i, I saw the cure i was like oh they they did one of these um like i, I know exactly where mm. all of this is going and i was pleasantly surprised that that was not the case i was expecting it to be a swerve and be about his homosexuality because mm-hmm. i i figured you know peter milligan wouldn't do a straight putt on it exactly uh so i that's why i was like oh that's interesting You know, if he's just a mutant, but he's going through and he's like trying to, you know, that's a weird thing for them to make the metaphor that direct, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, and I'm kind of glad they didn't do that because, you know, I don't know that he wouldn't have stepped on a bunch of landmines. Sure. Uh, You know, Uh, but yeah, I like the story quite a bit and it it was better on reread than it was on the, uh, the first read for me. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And uh, that we're entering into next issue. We're talking about the final full arc of ecstatics. Then there's one wrap up issue. And then that's it. We're going to figure out what we're doing after that. 
We should talk about um, that. <laughs> we should talk about that. We should have a conversation about that sometime. <laughs> Between this episode and the next one, we should. Okay. Um, the uh, We should also, uh, if you have things to say about ecstatics, we'll definitely do a feedback episode. Yeah. I'm really so curious. Now is the time to get that stuff in. I'm really curious about people's opinions. Um, if like this was, especially if this was your first time, like me, like going through this, like I had really had no direct experience with the series before. And I've been, I've been like, I was not worried because Gary makes usually Gary usually has good taste, but um, you know it's always something weird like oh like this nobody's ever talked about this with me before. Is it bad? <laughs> um, yeah, but it, well, it, and every once in a while stuff like that like that you think was like a hidden gem, when you go back to it, it's actually kind of crummy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I've been I've been rereading a lot of comics lately because it's been my like before bed ritual, and uh, there's stuff I've gone back to that like I thought was like an A plus and is like a B. Mm-hmm you know, in hindsight. Um, but I still think ecstatics on the balance is an A plus, uh, with the unfortunate princess Diana arc, which doesn't really work. So, yeah, this has been good. And the next episode is ecstatics versus the Avengers. So, uh, stay tuned, everybody. We get, we get mainstream so Marvel in this series. Yeah. So fucking fun. Uh, if you like this show, go to patreoncom slash duck feed TV, leave us a rating review. And most importantly, tell your friends, uh, we really appreciate everyone who does that and everyone who's uh, stuck with us through this change and will stick through us through the next change. Yeah. When we pivot to being about bagels. Bagel talk. It's going to be yep. bagels with buds. Everything to everything. <laughs> getting, uh, <laughs> it's buds and, and, yeah. and buckets. <laughs> getting, <Yep>. getting bagels. <laughs> buds and buckets of bagels. <laughs> um, yo, Jeremy, I know I ask you this every episode, but what's your favorite bagel? <laughs> what's your favorite bagel? Uh, what's your favorite bagel? That's our old catchphrase. What's your favorite bagel? <laughs> I don't have a favorite bagel. It's not real food. It's just bland. You don't have a favorite bagel? Uh, I don't give a fuck about bagels, my man. Come on. What the fuck, dude? This <laughs> is such a bombshell for this podcast. <laughs> uh, that, what? I mean, I just, it's just, <laughs> we should have just discuss this before we started the big I mean, do you have a favorite toast like it's the most boring it's just it's just it's just food man like it's not ah, man I, like of course i have a favorite bagel I, I mean like it's just bread dog like what do you i mean <laughs> no but you put stuff on the bread dude that's like saying you don't have a favorite sandwich because it's just bread I, no it's not no it, it, it number one no it is not <laughs> <laughs> absolutely it is not bagels are just fucking boring they're so boring that they had to invent a bagel that was called the everything bagel to entice people to eat more bagels <laughs> <laughs> it's like that is one of those uh i love everything bagels because it's so grandiose like bed bath and beyond yeah like the, the beyond part way, of that like, carrying a lot of weight everything <laughs> Like, this bagel contains your wildest dream and much and much like this that section at bed bath and beyond the bagel it do, does not live up for the to the hype like it's just all like the correct answer is salt i mean oh, sure salt is good <laughs> i don't what do you do? a salt bagel fucking owns dude you get a good salt bagel what this tells me is that you have not had good bagels i mean i in, in fairness I, I grew up in a place that like did not that, like still to this day i don't know where i would go to get a bagel in louisiana like I, I have no clue i'm sure somebody somewhere sells it but like i could just go get a beignet or like a kolache yeah a kolache will beat out yeah. a bagel every single day of the week and twice on sunday so ah, man I, next time you come to portland we're, we're going on a bee hunt. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I haven't done one of those since my bachelor party, and that ended up terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure there's good bagels out there, but I don't I don't even like to make top ten lists out of, like, things that I like. So, like, you're never going to be like, oh, wow, you're right. Like, my favorite bagel now is the, 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 hey. the zombie bagel from Portland. Like, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> I'm not trying, trying to get you to make it your favorite. I just want you to have one good bagel. The zombie cannabis bagel fucking yeah, they, portland the, uh, yeah they're I mean, a little bit different they're free range <laughs> full of t- they're full of cbd uh, why don't you take the effort you're making in this bagel thing and just bring me a glass of water waiter instead of making me go get my own water <laughs> fucking weird <laughs> <laughs> bye everybody uh, bye <laughs>